I'm Archibald Chesterfield III and today I'd like to talk about overrated, overrated vintage Rolexes. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of people out there who love the Rolex brand. They love it. They love it. They love it. But uh, I got to be completely honest with you. There are certain watches which I don't understand why they command such a huge premium. Case in point is the double red Sea Dweller. And uh, I mean, to be completely honest with you, if you were looking, if, if you were looking for a nice vintage um, Rolex Sea Dweller, I'd be inclined to get the white writing one. That's a good value piece. It's uh, half the price of the double red, a lot lower than the, the double red Sea Dweller. The same, you know, there's, there's so many pieces that are just so overrated, so overrated. And um, plastic, plastic, the 5513 I think is a great watch. That's a great watch. I think, I think that's good buying. The red 1680, again, I'd be going for a white 1680. Hell of a lot cheaper, a lot better bang per buck. Um, as far as the... Um, the Explorer 2 goes, ooh, they're expensive. An Explorer 2, like the uh, 1655, the plastic Explorer 2, very, very dear. Are they worth it? I think they're a very niche type watch there. But um, there, there is many watches which I think are potential to become very valuable. Things like the, um, the Omega Flightmaster, Speedmasters, Speedmaster Mark II, all of those sort of on the side type watches, they're, they're equally as good as some of these Rolex brethren. And uh, I, I really think the red, the red writing Sea Dweller or the, uh, the Submariner is the most overrated, overrated waste of money a collector could buy. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to put my, 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 my head on the block here. I think they're overrated and I don't think they're worth the money. And uh, the scary part is there, there is so many imitation dials and is it a service dial or original dial? There's so many things you've got to be so careful of and that dial controls so much of the value to it. So I don't know what to say really. It's, um, it's just crazy. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece, we adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000, it's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel i doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best. So, in many ways, a lot of these uh, vintage pieces are fucking overrated. They are so overrated. The, uh, the double red Sea Dweller, one of the most overrated of watches of all time. The, um, the Paul Newman Daytona, overrated. The, um, the red Submariner, overrated. And, um, You've got to really look at it and say, what the fuck are you paying all that money for? And um, I, I just, I just think they're overrated. That's what's, what's, what's what I think there. The same can be said for some modern watches. Breitling itself, there. I'd hate to buy a Breitling new. Breitling themselves, dealers will. Breitling themselves will dump stock with grey dealers. Okay, they will dump, dump stock. I've seen it in Australia. 
with uh, a few dealers who have had Breitling new, new old stock pieces, modern pieces, for 30 percent of retail 30 to 40 percent of retail and uh when things are that cheap you've got to really ask yourself is that a brand you really want to be collecting or keeping and for as much as i love the breitling navi timer the fact that a lot of them have a set value 7750 shitter movement in them really detracts from it the 7750 tractor engine it's such a noisy movement. You know, I'll be honest with you. The, the thing I really find with a chronograph is after owning a number of Breguet Type 20s, owning a number of really special pieces, the best movement in a chronograph is a manual wind movement. The rotors are so noisy in an automatic chronograph. It just sucks. It's tacky. It's distasteful. I'm Archie Luxury reporting on overrated watches. Tell me what you fuckers think of it.